guys, the financial system could be on the verge of collapse. Very well could be. 2008 has a lot of similarities to today. There's a lot of things that Ben Bernanke, who was the Fed chair at that time, was saying back then that Jerome Powell is saying today. I'm going to go through a little bit of a correlation. We're going to walk through what happened 2007, 2008, 2009. Then we're going to hit exactly what's going on today. And just to show you, contagion doesn't mean that something Silicon Valley Bank happens and a week later, if the whole system doesn't collapse, we're good. That's not what it means. You're going to see how long and drawn out 2008 was, the financial crisis. So something very interesting that I saw here. Silicon Valley Bank, March 8th is when everything started. March 8th, 2023. Back in 2008, March 7th, 2008, FDIC takes over Douglas National Bank in Kansas City. So right there is a little bit of a cool anecdote where we're one day apart. Now look at this. That was March 7th, 2008. So let's write this down. Let's pull up just so we can keep a timeline of what's happening. Now you would think contagion happens all the banks go down, Lehman Brothers go down, and AIG, and we have all these bailouts and everything that's happening, and boom, we're good. We're good in 2009. But no, between March and September, that's six months, you had a lot of people coming out and saying, oh, everything's going to be fine. And you had so many different banks here. We'll put this on the screen of how many banks went under. During that time, Lehman Brothers was one of the ones to file for bankruptcy. And when did that happen? September. It took that long for one of the big banks, this was Lehman, to go down. And all the way through there, all that time, six months, seven months going on, what was happening from the government? There was really no government interjection. You had the Fed saying certain things. You had the the Treasury Secretary saying certain things, but nothing came out. There was nothing from the top. President Bush was president at the time. That's when we're going back to. President Bush called for the TARP program. So TARP came in in October. My point in saying this is the contagion effect still hadn't hit by October. Yes, it was starting to factor itself in. That's when the government intervention started. But look at this storm that happened in 2009. I'm just going to go through a bunch of dates here. This is the FDIC taking over different banks across the country. January 16th, January 23rd, January 30th, February 6th, February 13th, February 27th, March 6th, March 13th, March 20th, March 20th, March 26th, April 24th. So all of that started in 2008. The contagion hadn't really looked very bad until September. TARP came in and then everything, you had a government come in, the government took care of things. And then what happened? You had 12 banks that went under in a matter of three months, not went under, but got taken over by F- the FDIC regulation. So I look at what's happening now, and we're going to go into back into the 1980s in a little bit, but I look at what's happening right now and say, well, Jerome Powell came out and spoke yesterday, and he said that the banking system is sound and resilient. He made it clear, in his opinion, that Silicon Valley Bank was an isolated incident. It was because they were mismanaged, doing wrong things, and that you don't have to worry about the rest of the banking system. He also said depositors are going to be backed. Janet Yellen came out later, who's Secretary of the Treasury, and she said, well, depositors are not going to be backed. So now we have two sides of the coin. They're not on the same page, which is a scary thing. And what is the answer? We don't know what the answer is. But with that being said, Ben Bernanke, Everybody knows Ben Bernanke. He made the infamous, infamous declaration of, before Congress in 2007. We do not any, expect any significant spillovers from the subprime market to the rest of the economy or to the financial system. That was in 2007, and you saw what happened. So they can go out there and just say, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. Everything's not fine. You do not print and print and print and print and drop interest rates to zero for such a long time and give out loans to people that you shouldn't be giving loans out to for decades, one decade, and say, yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. We're going to have this thing all under control. So guys, I want to pull up a clip of Ben Bernanke from 2007, 2008 crisis. But before I do that, subscribe to the channel. We go through a lot of stock analysis too. And the reason that we do that is to find stocks at good prices. You will be able to find Google, Apple, Meta, et cetera, at really good prices when you get some type of collapse. So subscribe to the channel. Those videos are always coming out of here. So let's watch this clip together of Ben Bernanke. 
I understand that people differ as to what we should do. For a That's second day in a row, Federal well. Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke uh, testified before Congress CSEs on the problems facing the economy. Bernanke appeared amid a backdrop of fading confidence in the U.S. financial system, but stressed that policymakers are working to find solutions to the issues at hand. We will work our way through these financial storms. We will work our way through this cyclical movement that we have, and uh, the economy will return to, to good growth, but we just have a few things to work through on, on, on the direction, on, on the way to doing that. Those challenges are immense. Ongoing credit troubles, high energy and food prices, and a severe housing slump. In response to controversy over the financial lifeline the government extended to mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, Bernanke said keeping them in their current form is the best solution going forward. With the economic problems expected to continue well into next year, the Fed is faced with finding the right course of action. It can't afford to lower interest rates again because that will aggravate inflation. On the other hand, boosting rates to fend off higher prices would deal a setback to the fragile economy and the already crippled housing market. Ed Donahue, The Associated Press. Guys, that was 14 years ago. If I didn't, let's say that I was dropped from a different planet, which some of you may think I am. You could show me Ben Bernanke and I would say, oh yeah, that's happening today. Exactly what is happening now is happen it happened back then in 2008. I'm not saying that it's a carbon copy because they it was different. There was, I would say, fraud in the system with the subprime loans that were backing everything. But think about what we have today. We have so much debt and so much printing that went on. It's the same game being played with different players. It's like somebody had a major league career from and they got went through 2008 and that was their prime they're now retired and now their kid is in the major leagues like Vlad Guerrero Jr same game different players this is exactly what's happening right now it is absolutely incredible to see okay guys so we talk about 2008 and people say okay well that's one event how can you correlate that well let's go back to the savings and loan crisis this was in the 70s and 80s and remember we were coming off of insane inflation during in the 1970s. And remember, it took 18, 19% interest rates to combat that inflation. That's when you were having all of the energy crises. There were gas stations that didn't have fuel. It was incredible. Watch the movie Miracle. You can see it. Going into the savings and loan crisis. Listen to this. We talk about contagion. I'm telling you, contagion isn't what the media is making you think that it is. It's not. It instantly happens. Look at this. Late 1970s to early 1980s. Many savings and loans institutions begin to suffer due to high interest rates and bad loans. Okay, now we get into 1982 to 1985. The number of savings and loan failures begin to increase with 42 institutions failing in 1982, 71 in 1983, and 120 in 1984. Look at the, we are being separated by years and the numbers just keep increasing. Federal Home Loan Bank Board adopts a new accounting rule that allows savings and loans to overstate the value of their assets, which encourages risky lending on investments. They're talking about how they're wanting to tighten credit right now, which is a really good sign. Let's hope that they do it. That's, that's my main thing. 1986, the number of savings and loan failures reaches 206. The number of savings and loans failures increases to 534 in 1987 with losses totaling $7.6 billion. So guys, and remember, this was, this was in the 1980s. So take those billions, extrapolate it with inflation, and there you have it. In 1988, that's when Congress passed an act. So Congress doesn't act immediately. The Fed isn't, isn't totally reactionary to things, which is a good thing in some cases and a bad thing in other cases. But... All in all, you need to understand that contagion from the aspect that they're talking about in the financial sector right now with Silicon Valley Bank, Credit Suisse, Signature Bank, First Republic is not a two to three week event where everything's going to be okay. I was talking about it on my morning show this morning. Things are very, very multifaceted. This doesn't determine everything. This is the dot plot from the Fed. They put this out yesterday, which was March 22nd. This alone, having interest rates being at 5% or 5.13%, being at 4.3% next year, coming down and being at 2.5% out into 2026, that doesn't do anything. There are so many things that are factored into this. Your debt situation, 
your creditors, the, your depositors, your creditors that are taking loans on cars, homes, any other big purchase items, businesses that are taking out loans on their, on their businesses. You have real estate that's involved in this. You have geopolitical things that are involved in this. You have anything that you can imagine, unemployment, anything that you can imagine is involved in this. This is a lagging indicator. They can raise they do, they raised interest rates by 25 basis points yesterday, right? It's not going to instantly just fix things. It's not going to do anything. This is it's going you know how far out how many months it's going to take for that to get implemented into markets. That's why inflation is still on the rise. They've raised interest rates about 5% this year. I mean, it's come down off of its 8 9% levels of CPI, core CPI, but it's still persistent. It's because you don't just say we're going to raise interest rates. It comes into the system and things boost up. Also, at the same point, remember, they're not doing quantitative tightening anymore. They are not shrinking their balance sheet anymore. As a matter of fact, they took $300 billion off of their balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet, in a matter of four months. And they put that $300 billion on just last week. So right away, there goes your quantitative tightening. Quantitative easing is back. There are many, many things circulating here. You can't just listen to what Janet Yellen is saying. You can't just listen to what Jerome Powell is saying and say, this is great. So you need to protect yourself. You need to subscribe to our channel, frankly. I'm going to take you through this whole thing. If this takes four or five years, I'm going to take you through it. I'll be here to make videos on it. This is just the beginning. I happen to love making videos on this. I have tons of notes over here. It is one of my favorite things to do. And one more thing to throw into that. Back in 2008, you know who was sitting at the table? Go watch the movie Margin Call. Go watch some things on YouTube. You know who was sitting at the table there with Ben Bernanke in 2008? Janet Yellen. She became Fed president right after Bernanke. Now she's secretary of the treasury. So those are your people that are leading things. And also, Jerome Powell is the person that told you that inflation is transitory. Well, do you believe him when he says that our banking system is sound? Just a question for you. Subscribe to the channel. You guys have a great day.